Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain Steve, and today, chums, I'm doing a bit of a Captain Steve talks, but I'm talking about a video game, No Man's Sky, and particularly the Super Formula. Now, a lot of people are like, not again. Well, yes, again, Sean Murray spoke to the New Yorker about the Super Formula, and that's the only time it's ever really been mentioned by Hello Games. However, somebody has hit me up with a video that's been archived off from a website that's recently gone down. So that's Exploring Life. Thank you very much for sending this over. And it was over on New Cal... AI. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, let's get to the actual video clip and let's see what they had to say about the Super Formula in 2015. So, to start off with some local t techniques, this is like the most basic, uh, but it kind of gives you an idea of the kind of noise cloud based technique we're talking about. Uh, Perlin and simplex noise get a really bad rap because of the picture on the bottom right. It's blobby, there's no distinct features. You're not really getting anything of interest from that, and we've probably all seen too many terrains that look a little bit like that. That's probably the first thing I ever generated right there. Um, still pretty bad. So these sort of things are really insufficient for generating terrain, but they do work as a basis for all other things. And they also explain kind of what I mean by a local technique. And then moving on. So it's not like those noise types are without meaning. You can get a lot more from them just by considering mathematical operations. So this is just to show that you can start with a noise generation technique that's really quick, really simple, and just by doing a little more work on it, you can have something that's starting to look like something we might use in game. Okay, so what we have inside of No Man's Sky is a lot of layers and filters when it comes to noise generators. So there's Perlin noise, there's Whirly, there's Vioni, and they're all sort of stacked on top of each other to give us the worlds that we've got now. Now, I quite like those sort of ribbon Perlin worms that we used to get on planets that sort of jumped out of the surface and back down again. Now they seem to just be level with the planet and maybe give sort of path in routes or maybe the odd circle and things, but it's not as crazy as one was inside of Vanilla, and I really miss those Perlin worms. But yeah, she then goes on to say about how cliffs and paths and regions are generated and how they can look more organic. And then she goes on to say something quite interesting. I'll shut up again for a moment and let you hear what she says. Or less, uh, less natural, if you want straight paths and cliffs and things, then something like picking points and calculating the distances. Something as simple as that can start to build up those shapes. And then... Anything that you want to add to the terrain, you can be thinking about any mathematical solid that you can create in a 3D voxel field. So a good example of that is uh, the super formula. That's something that Sean's been looking into recently. And it's a simple, simple formula laid out in the paper there um, that just lets you create some really interesting natural shapes. And again, that's not really the... You can dot them around the terrain, like the screenshot there, and that's just to give an example of how it would work. But it's the kind of thing that we'd layer with other techniques, maybe use some turbulence or you know, um, add or subtract them to other things in order to create something that's actually interesting. Nothing by itself is really interesting enough. The key is having this toolkit of loads of different techniques that you can use in different areas in, until you get something that looks like the, the goal you're seeking which we're doing for every voxel. So thinking in terms of our sphere again, you can imagine this as layers moving out from the sphere, like mountains on a planet, that kind of thing. And this is where we can take our 2D noise, we can consider it to be a density, and we get your really basic height field. And it's pretty obvious to see that height fields are insufficient for interesting terrains, because there's no case where you can get overhangs, you can't get tunnels, you can't get uh, caves or anything like that. So it's really critical to move into to 3D and I think from really basic terrain generation that can be often what it's lacking um, but there's a lot you can do there from just turbulence on shapes you've already generated on your height field to constructing whole new solids like things from the super formula or methods of um, digging tunnels into the world um, you can be adding as well subtracting as well as adding through this and any other operator you want so okay Here's a quick video with some of our terrain stuff. Um, I think it's kind of heavy on tunnels, but you can um, look through and see some of the ways that we're breaking up areas of the world. So yeah, this is where we start to get something more fantastical. So you probably don't see floating islands on Earth, but we're big fans. 
going to things with rocky valleys and sorry the song moving quite fast uh, to more natural terrains but when you see it really close and everything plays well whether you're flying over it or whether you're walking along it uh, so moving on from generation to actually decorating our planet um, we when we first come to create our planet, that would normally be at the time that you arrive in a solar system. So as you heard there, the actual terrain is going to be using the actual super formula as well as the wireframes that they put on. So any fixed assets, rocks, trees, fish, whatever, will have some sort of super formula to sort of morph them. But not only that, also the caves and the terrain will be manipulated using the super formula. It's like she showed on that screenshot, all the sort of pillars that were being randomly generated in the background were generated via the super formula, giving a very unique looking biome, which we just don't get in current iteration today and now she's going on to talk about how those super formulas and the noise generators are working in tandem to create lush vast forest forests out of all the flora yeah it's amazing um, like we want to forage a forest with loads of undergrowth to look like something that's really mature or something that's newer with smaller trees and we need to be able to think about that uh, pattern generation time um, in terms of creating those individual objects um, the artists are responsible for creating base rigs and shapes for those, but then we put together parts of geometry like for this tree. Um, and once those are assembled, we texture them and we texture them again by combining loads of layers of textures, uh, recoloring them individually and creating masks that match that. Finally, to make the shapes interesting and distinct, we apply deformation. So we do that based on simple animations that we can blend between. So for example, for a creature that might be elongating its neck, for a tree that might be curling it up or bending it over a certain way to look like it stood in the wind like that for a really long time. Um, just as you can see from stepping between the second last and the last image there. So then when it comes to use those in game, um, again, because these are all created online, then all of the gameplay data needs to be created by us online. Uh, we use a component-based engine, so then building up our, our objects in the world, whether those are static trees or ones that have some sort of uh, gameplay interaction or ones that do something when you shoot them, uh, anything like that we can build up with components once we're in the game. But everything else has to be done live as well, so rendering out imposters, creating thumbnails for use in our engine, um, creating lighting and also putting together things like behavior trees so for all our spaceships and all our creatures and things their interaction and their behavior has to be built up in game depending on the type of characteristics that we've specified that they have so here's some of our decorated worlds uh, things to look out for are for example ways that we cluster trees so we do that both from you know realism perspective in terms of building forests, but also in terms of uh, what our art director uh, really likes to talk about is if you have an individual tree, that's not very interesting. If you have three or five trees, that's quite a nice scene. But if you have three or five trees in a cluster with some medium sized plants around them and then some little plants at the bottom, that's where you start to get something that people actually want to look at, that you can look at any scene and think, oh, I can take a screenshot of that and that would be nice. Okay people, so you've heard here how powerful the super formula actually is or was inside of their development stages and it's not in the actual system as to now. Now I have done videos on the super formula before and I'm going to put them into a little playlist. I'm going to put it on the end card of this video. So please watch to the end of the credits. There will be a little card that pops up, hit that and it'll be everything you need to know about the super formula to date. Please give it a watch. Until next time, you've been awesome. Take care, goodbye, goodbye and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. Add Froze Revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.